okay you should be able to see my slide right hybrid agile okay very good very good welcome everyone for uh, my june webinar on hybrid agile uh, we are going to talk about um, uh, what hybrid is doing uh, in the uh, in the project management world today or uh, in the product development work today so um, uh, let's get started. We have, uh, I have laid down the agenda here. We'll have introductions and in introduction to you know all of us and intro to hybrid agile. And then uh, we will talk about uh, how to create a hybrid approach. What are the what are the ways to create hybrid approach? And then hybrid methodology examples. And then we'll have a quiz. Okay, all right. So uh, some of you who don't know me, my name is N.K. Shirvastwa. I am a certified enterprise agile coach. Uh, I have uh, I have been doing coaching for over 12, 13 years now. I started uh, my own company in uh, December 2011. And uh, since then, uh, I have been doing agile coaching, project management training, process improvement trainings, um, and, and uh, consulting and all those kind of uh, fun stuff. Um, and before I started my company, I worked in different companies in uh, agile and project leadership roles. Uh, I was born in uh, a small town in India called this Meret. And now I live in uh, Cary, North Carolina with wife and kids. All right. So if you are not speaking, please mute your microphones uh, so it doesn't uh, Give the back background uh, not noise. The not right now. I know it's. Um... So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's move on. So uh, so we will use Menti for uh, for interaction or engagement, and it's very easy to use a Menti. Many of you would have used it. So let me show you here Menti screen. Um, so you join uh, by going to menti.com from your device, whatever device you're using, connected to internet, and then use the code here, what is written here on the top, 44632770. So if you use this, you will be, the your device should show this question. And then if you can respond to this question, question that will be great. So what are your expectations from this webinar? Why? Are you here uh, today? Continue learning. Very good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yes. Continue learning. What else? Upgrade. Interest. Understand hybrid agile. OK, very good. Very good. I know two of you responded. OK, OK, very good, very good. Understand how to adapt. Interest, gain exposure. Very good, very good. What else? Understand hybrid agile, hybrid agile. Very good, very good. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Um, so uh, I'll be doing the same presentation at projectmanagement.com sometime in July. We have asked for a date. They have not given us a date so far, uh, but I I will be doing it projectmanagement.com to go to the wider wider audience uh, and uh, share my ideas uh, with them. Uh, and here there are some of the uh, products that we have developed uh, at RefineM. The essential gear for project managers is a toolkit that project managers can use uh, to make uh, project management a little easier for them. We have a PMP exam prep simulator. If you are preparing for the PMP exam or somebody is preparing for the PMP exam, that's the one. And uh, agility assessment, uh, since we are talking about hybrid agile here, so this is the tool that can help you assess the agility of your team or organization. So uh, I will highly encourage you to use the trial version of this and see uh, and see yourself in which areas your team is doing good and which areas your team need uh, attention. 
PDU bundle is all of you who are PMPs and want to earn PDUs. So PDU bundle is about, I think, uh, around 50 different one hour videos and each one give you one PDU. So this whole PDU bundle will give you about 50 PDUs. And then there are some uh, self-paced trainings that we have developed on agile fundamentals, project management fundamental, business requirements and backlog grooming. Uh, so if you are interested in any one of them, you can you can subscribe to those. All right, let's move on. So introduction to hybrid. That's uh, that's what we are going to do now. Uh, so before we do that, uh, let's go to Menti again and check this out. Does your organization currently use agile hybrid or waterfall? Let's uh, let's check this out. Okay. Okay. Anybody more? Okay. Very good. So uh, mostly, I think uh, uh, the uh, all of you present here either waterfall or hybrid. Okay. That's what that's what I get. Nobody is using pure pure agile, which is understandable. All right, so let's move. And I think this will help uh, to uh, all of you who are using waterfall, how you can move towards towards agile if you want to. OK, so let's go back here. Uh, so this is waterfall, the picture of waterfall. And uh, all of you uh, who have been doing project management for several years know how it works. Uh, you do requirements or do analytic requirement analysis. You do design, then you do development. Uh, if you did a software project, you may do coding. Uh, and then you do testing or validation. And then you put the things into use or production and then maintenance. So this is like a step stepwise approach and it is like a steps of a waterfall. So that is why this is called as a waterfall approach. And then you have uh, Agile, which is a iterative approach. So you have your requirements in form of a backlog, which is prioritized. And then you take the smaller chunk of that backlog, high priority items, and then you run it or uh, develop them uh, through a two or four week iteration cycle. And then you create deliverables. Uh, you create a release and create a deliverable and then you you uh, get feedback from the customer you get feedback from the team which is retrospectives uh, and then you go to the next uh, next iteration and so on and so forth and during each iteration the entire team meets every day to check progress on the goals of the iteration or the goals of the sprint so that's the that's the high level process uh, i am assuming most of you who are present here know this know this process all right let's move on so hybrid is some kind of combining the two uh, so this is one way of doing it there are multiple ways of implementing hybrid project management in your project so somehow combining the uh, waterfall and agile aspects together whatever is feasible or possible in your environment or your 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 team or your project uh, so it's a, it comb combines the feature of a stepwise approach and also the, uh, the iterative approach. So both approaches are combined and then you create this uh, what is called as hybrid uh, hybrid environment. All right, let's move on. Uh, so this is the trend I wanted to share with you. Uh, this is a report from PMI called as uh, uh, pulse of the profession and this is from PMI and you can see the reference over here. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is the one peer learning thought leadership and pulse. So pulse of the profession is the report. So based on this report, you can see very clearly that hybrid is gaining momentum and actually in 2023 sometime it it crossed. OK, it crossed. Uh, agile. So agile has started. Agile adoption has started falling 
whereas hybrid keeps going. Of course, water fall keeps uh, keeps falling because uh, many teams are moving either into pure agile or into a hybrid environment. So this is really uh, something to note or something to notice that uh, many, many teams, many, many organizations continue to uh, adopt uh, hybrid and now more hybrid than than waterfall or oh, sorry than agile so this is a good switch this is a switch that uh, to be noted that now hybrid has taken over the the pure agile um, and uh, there there are reasons for that and we will we will talk about uh, what kind of environments or when hybrid is uh, going to be very very useful okay so we'll we'll talk about that uh, during this uh, webinar today. All right. Um, if you have any questions, you can put your question in the chat. We can come back, or if it's something very relevant to what we are talking, if you have that question, you uh, you can uh, you you can uh, you know unmute your microphone and ask. We we have a small group here, so I think it can be more and more interactive. All right. Let's move on. So let's uh, let's think about that. What do you think are the greatest benefits of hybrid approach? From your perspective, like uh, I saw some of you are already using hybrid and many of you are not using, but if you were to use, what are the greatest benefits that you see? What are the big benefits uh, that you see of using a hybrid approach? Let's see what what you think. Flexible. Flexibility, stability. I think you are saying flexibility and stability. Whosoever responded this one, that's how I am reading this. Uh, greater certainly with the scope along with higher satisfaction. Make what works best for the team, right? Adaptability or adaptable. Ability to iterate and adjust. Yeah. Yeah. Flexibility of project, yeah. Combine benefit of both ability to prioritize and adjust priorities and needed. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of good things here that uh, that you have that you have shared. Very good, excellent, excellent. So let's uh, let's move on. Uh, so some of the benefits you have listed, and I will list uh, some more. Okay, so we get a comprehensive list of benefits of using using hybrid. Uh, so very first is a tailored approach. So you can tailor this approach. So you you are not totally waterfall, you are not totally agile. So you can tailor and you can take the pieces of agile and use it in your environment. And how that can be used is, is up to you and your team, how you want to structure. I will share you some of the options but then it is it is totally for you to use uh, what options that come to your mind or what you discuss with your team. So uh, a tailored approach. So that's a, that's one of the benefits. Uh, easier change management. If you bring the agile um, concepts in your projects, then uh, agile is very flexible on changes. You know, you don't have to go through the change management process in pure agile world. You don't have to go to the change management process and have a change management board and things like that. You take the uh, new change and put it in the backlog in the order of the priority. That's what happens in pure agile environment. So you can see how do you bring that change management, which is very easy, very flexible, uh, and uh, and it can be done without a change control board and all those kind of things. How can you bring that concept into your hybrid environment. So that's something that you, you need to think, how do you bring that, uh, that into your environment, but it, uh, it will ease out the change management if you, uh, if you uh, implement hybrid. Uh, increased stakeholder engagement, because if you are doing the iterative process within your waterfall, then at each iteration, you have an opportunity to engage with the stakeholders. Uh, how frequently you engage, it's again dependent on what kind of 
uh, setup or what kind of process you want to have uh, but it will it can increase stakeholder engagement just because of uh, that aspect of doing iteration and allowing you to have stakeholder engagement uh, you know at the end of each iteration uh, so whatever number of iterations you have in your project it gives you so many opportunities to improve stakeholder engagement it can also increase learning because at the end of each iteration you can do retrospective and the retrospective helps you to learn and improve so that's a that's a fantastic thing to do at the end of each uh, each iteration um, it also uh, uh, paves path for innovation and improvement so you think about how to do things in a different way what is the way to bring some innovation and improvements so that it, it allows you to it gives you more opportunities to to do that uh, it also helps sticking to budget and schedule because in agile project in true agile projects budget and schedule are fixed time and money is fixed so if you can bring some of aspect into this then you can it can help you sticking to budget and schedule and also uh, the, a way to try new methods there are a lot of ways to try new methods uh, so is there any other benefit we you talked about some of these benefits in in the uh, in menti and some of that there is an overlap definitely there is an overlap uh, between you and what i have listed on my slide uh, but uh, anything else that you can think of anything else that anybody can think of um, you can you can speak or you can uh, i i'm not looking at the uh, at the chat but you can put the chat and sarah is looking at at the chat and she can uh, she can bring it up anything else that you think is combining both waterfall and agile uh, provides you uh, the benefit anybody anybody uh, did we detail the your combined uh, inputs from uh, the menti and this seems like a comprehensive list okay but might have missed something uh, and uh, i was thinking if you can add but if not that's uh, that's all right let's uh, let's move on so uh, when to use a hybrid approach when uh, when hybrid approach is the best so i will i will pause here and i will say let's have a conversation here uh, let's have a little conversation here uh, before i i talk about my slide when to use hybrid approach can anybody talk maybe one or two people talk when to use hybrid approach some of you are using hybrid right so when do you think in which situations uh, hybrid approach is very useful you can you can uh, unmute your microphone and talk anyone let's say it's a closed forum we, we this just so don't have to worry about say whatever you have to say anybody projects where the goal is not quite clear or there's some uncertainty on how to achieve the goal very good Excellent, Tashana, Shana, ta, Tashana, right? Very good. Where project scope is not clear or the goals are not very clear, I, I think that's very good. I think that's uh, where the waterfall will not work because uh, it requires a very high level of clarity upfront. So a waterfall approach is a is a good approach when there is a very good clarity. Okay. Uh, other cases the uh, you know agile or hybrid can be uh, can be very useful okay let's move let's move on so i will list down some of the situations or some of the conditions where uh, agile approach can be a very good approach so in organizations with rigid processes uh, mark the word rigid processes that want to maintain organizational control 
and structure, but still want the opportunity to improve and update the project as it is progressing, as it, it is progressing. So the there are organization controls, so you need to get approvals at different stages of the, uh, the stages of the project that that will happen. You will have some structure, you know, and maybe that structure is uh, not so flexible, but there is a desire to get an opportunity to improve as the project goes on. So there is a desire by the organization. There is a desire by the team to improve as you go and also update the project as it is progressing. So the as it unfolds, as the project unfolds, uh, if you want to update the project, project plans and all those kind of things uh, or scope or whatever, so you can update the project. So if you have that kind of little flexibility to update the project uh, and also um, opportunity to improve so in, in, in spite of the organization has a rigid process and it has a lot of controls and structure. So this is this is applicable when you have that kind of a situation. So this this allows you to give some flexibility and and improvements and uh, updating the project. Uh, the second is where you have very aggressive delivery schedule. Okay, you have very aggressive delivery schedule, but also with the goal of quickly developing a solution. So very aggressive schedule you want to get it done quickly and uh, you want to develop a solution so you can experiment and develop a solution in an iterative manner and then can check uh, how that solution works with the customer so that when you deliver uh, with that aggressive delivery schedule you know and in some some cases you can if you develop a solution quickly it is not a finished pro it may not be a finished project but it is something that gives the customer to have a look and feel and touch they can they can see it uh, it may not go in production but they they can see it they can see it they can say oh okay um, this this we like maybe you can talk about how you can achieve some parts of that solution in an aggressive in in a aggressive delivery schedule some part of that may not be possible so that allows you to have those kind of conversations and have still meet the aggressive delivery schedule so in those situations if you have very aggressive delivery schedule and uh, you want to come up with a solution quickly instead of trying to create a detailed plan like it like a fully waterfall kind of a thing uh, sometimes it happens with an aggressive schedule that you take a lot of time just to create the plan and everything of the plan. Uh, it may take some time to gather all those input to create a, uh, you know, a, a predictable schedule. And in the meantime, the clock is kick, uh, clicking. The clock is moving ahead. The, the time doesn't stop and you have a very aggressive delivery schedule. So how do you how do you manage that? So this is. The hybrid is a one way of managing that aggressive delivery schedule. So keep in mind, if you come across a delivery aggressive delivery schedule, this could be one of the option to tailor your approach to deliver your project in a hybrid using the hybrid approach. Uh, the other one is uh, the project with a strict deadline, but where changes are negotiable. This is excellent. Like you know, and I have worked in. Uh, I have done a lot of projects when they come up with the strict deadlines. Uh, we can say, OK, um, there is a possibility that we may not be able to do everything within this deadline. So what is that thing that can be negotiated? You know, what is in the scope that can be negotiated if that doesn't, uh, if that it is not complete, still it will meet the business objectives. OK, so this this is also if you have a very strict deadline, um, it, it becomes a challenge to uh, deliver within that deadline the entire scope. The, the thing is that it has to be absolutely clear and in very less situations, it will be exactly, you know, it, it will be like absolutely clarity. Absolute clarity may not be there. So 
I think that, that I'm giving you the scenarios in which you can think about that. Oh, this is the this is the situation. This is the scenario of the project. This is the environment in which we are working. Uh, let me let me think about using hybrid. How can I use hybrid? So that is that is where I'm taking you. So these are different different scenarios, different possibilities. Um, highly regulated industries. That's another place where you can use. And why why did this this, uh, this is useful in this situation? Because in the regulated industries, when you have a new regulation that comes, it comes with a strict deadline. It comes with a date. And I have worked with so many projects where the teams are trying to implement the regulation and the, there is no clarity in the beginning. It takes a lot of time to develop that clarity and maybe the dead, deadline is three months from now, but it takes maybe more than a month and a half or two months just to clear everything. So if you wait to start after you have gained the clarity, then it's already too late. So uh, in this case, the difference between third and fourth bullet is in the third bullet, the changes are negotiable. In this case, there is no negotiability on the scope because this is a regulation and regulation has to be implemented, all of it, right? So if you start working on it, uh, maybe you can, you, as, as you go, you can make changes to whatever you are learning. So it, it will be very helpful to use agile or hybrid agile in a regulated industry, a very important like all the insurance industry and finance industry where there are a lot of regulations. I worked on this project in uh, with uh, one of my insurance customer where they had this regulation come uh, very, very often. Uh, probably every year there may be uh, several regulations that will come and uh, there are a lot of regulations that are state specific. Uh, so uh, I have seen uh, the, the project managers struggle because if they go to the business and say, okay, we don't understand this. We are trying to get the clarification uh, from, from, the, from the state. And it, it takes time. It doesn't happen that you, know, you uh, send them an email or whatever is your method of getting clarification. It will come next day. It takes time. So what do you do in the meantime? You, you cannot just sit idle. You start working, you start putting something together so that you, you start moving. Okay. So in, in highly regulated industry, this may be this approach actually will be better than the waterfall approach because if you wait for everything to be clarified, the time goes away. So it's a it's a it's a it's an excellent. Uh, opportunity or an excellent situation to use hybrid approach in highly regulated industries. A uh, project where agile is too flexible, but waterfall is too rigid, and you are thinking some middle of the road solution, right? What is my middle of the road? Neither on this side nor on that side. So what is my uh, middle of the road solution? So this uh, hybrid approach provides you the middle of the road solution. All right, let's move on. So what are the best practices that you can use uh, to implement Agile as so a hybrid? And uh, so develop a value stream map that integrates waterfall and Agile. Value stream map is actually you define your process, your steps to deliver the project. What are going to be your steps? What steps will go through the iterative part what step will be part of the more waterfall kind of a thing? So think about developing a value stream map, which is a visualization uh, of your um, of your process. We are not going to talk about value stream map today. I, I think I have not. I think I have a whole webinar on value stream map. If you go to uh, Refinem YouTube and Sarah can type that uh, URL to go to the YouTube uh, Refinem YouTube. So if you go to our YouTube, you will find a webinar, whole webinar on value stream mapping. So you use the value stream mapping uh, to that integrates, develop a process that integrates agile and waterfall in 
the way that is going to help your teams. The second is define what agile and waterfall practices will be used. So you have defined the steps and they say, okay, we will use daily standups. We will use retrospective. We will use backlog refinement, uh, whatever, whatever you will use uh, in whatever way you will use and when you will use those. So that's the part of uh, you know going deeper into uh, your process. You have developed value stream map, which is a high level process. Now you are getting uh, into the little bit of nitty gritties of how you are going to use it, what practices you will use and, and things like that. So and then uh, what you do whenever you are doing this kind of an exercise of deciding about how you are going to use the hybrid approach, involve the entire team and the stakeholders because they they are the people who are going to carry on the activities team and stakeholders have a big role to play in all the projects so they will have certain uh, responsibilities and they will have certain activities particularly reviewing the your deliverables that's one of the things that stakeholders will do review your deliverables and provide feedback so they are also they are important so you work with the entire team and as well as stakeholders in defining the what is going to be your hybrid process. Uh, clear communication with project team and keep the communication open and over, there is nothing like over communication. So have that very clear communication with the project team and stakeholders. And also you would like to collect, analyze and report metrics because you want to see that if you implemented something new that has helped you. Okay. How do you demonstrate that it has helped you unless you collect, analyze and report metrics? So unless you do that, that's not going to happen. So decide which metrics are important for you uh, and which are not relevant. And, and there need not be like 20 different metrics that you need to collect. Maybe three, maybe four, I will say no more than six. I will just give you a kind of a uh, ballpark. No more than six metrics that you should be using to uh, uh, to show progress, to show that, that uh, the team is improving, team is getting better. So uh, figure out that relevant metrics. The one of the very uh, common metrics is plan versus actual. What did you plan and how that actual was achieved? What is the variation between plan and uh, actuals? Um, and you can use uh, maybe the earned value metrics because that tells you the variations. OK, that tells you how much variation is there between plan and actual. So you can you can use it, uh, uh, use those. Or if you don't want to go to earned value management, maybe at the end of each iteration, you can say this is what we planned and this is what actually happened. Uh, that gives you idea uh, uh, idea about this. And uh, for the hybrid part, I I'm I'm not uh, saying that you have to use as user stories. You have to use your story points. That is that is more for the teams that use pure agile. If you want to use those, and if you want to use those, uh, you know, story points and all that. That's OK. That's absolutely OK. And you don't have to use even Scrum. You can use the other methods and you can you can use um, Kanban. You can use a combination. You can use waterfall here and Kanban here and combine that. Whatever works out, whatever works out. So you don't have to follow one single method because we are talking about hybrid. So you can combine different methods and take advantage from all the methods that are available. So you collect and report relevant metrics. That's uh, another part of uh, best practice. And regularly review the process using frequent retrospective. So whatever you do, keep some time for doing retrospective. It need not be every two weeks or everything. It can be a mo every month. Whatever frequency works out for you, whatever that works out for you. But it it, it should happen on a regular interval. So. Uh, as a as a yardstick or as a thumb rule, if it is a um, you know one year or less, probably every month. If it is longer, then you can have a longer uh, you know review process. But I will say that 
uh, probably every month is is pretty decent to start with. If you can do every two weeks, that's even better. But to start with, I think every month will be will be good enough to to begin with. All right. So uh, let's talk about hybrid methodology examples. So how can you structure uh, your your method, or how you can structure your your process? So what are the different ways of doing it and uh, I will show you a few, uh, three or four, but then uh, it is unlimited. You can you can combine uh, the way you want. You can use your innovation and you don't have to stick to one method. You know? So uh, use the input from the team, see what your situation is, and then develop the, the, the method that is useful for you, a hybrid method. So I will show you some of the examples uh, examples over there here, and I'm calling them three examples here. Scrumban, which is a combination of Scrum and Kanban, the two agile methods. So this is a hybrid within agile, okay? So this is a hybrid method within agile. And then you have waterfall, water scrum fall, and we'll talk about that. And the other one I'm calling it is Vagile or water agile or whatever, and these are my terms. You can use your terms, whatever terms you want to use. So, how does this Scrum Ban looks like? So, Scrum Ban uses Kanban, which is like a board over here. And board you can use anywhere. Anywhere you can use the board. So, you decide what is your process for completing each deliverable. Okay. So, I will say that if you look at your requirement traceability matrix. So the, the columns in your requirement traceability matrix becomes the column here. And then each row is for each requirement. So each requirement goes through those activities of the RTM, you know, and at the end it is finished. So you track each of the requirement from start to finish using a requirement traceability matrix. So instead of using requirement traceability matrix, you can use your Kanban board, which is much more vis visual. And if you have a good tool to implement this, then it can give you some matrix also that you can analyze and, and see how things are going. Uh, and then you can combine some scrum aspects of planning, retrospective and daily meetings. So some of these are aspects of um, of a Scrum that you can use in your project. So you have a Kanban board created, and then you have your uh, your uh, regular cadence or regular regular ceremonies. Uh, and you can decide daily meetings is usually daily meetings, or sometimes you can call as uh, team uh, team touch base meetings or whatever. And it need not be daily. You can have it three times a week. You can have it two times a week. So you are not basically following a methodology as is. You are making changes based on what you do. Many, many teams do this that they don't meet every day because things don't change every day so much and they don't have this two week iteration kind of a thing. So they don't see a need to meet every day. So they'll say, OK, we'll meet three times a week or we'll meet two times a week or we meet one time a week, whatever whatever, but some kind of a uh, touch base, regular touch base, and then retrospectives, maybe set a cadence for this. You are not, you are not, if you are using Scrum and Kanban both, you can have uh, the Scrum meeting two weeks, or you can have it three weeks, you can have it four weeks, whatever cadence applies, and some uh, some planning meeting on a, on a regular basis. Uh, so that's uh, Scrum ban, and then this is, I call it water Scrum fall, because it's like, you know, like a sandwich here. So you have initiation and planning upfront done. You know, so the like like waterfall projects. So you do your yeah, project charter and uh, initiation, and then develop all the plans um, in WBS schedule and resource plan, risk management plan, and what are all the plans you can develop. And then when you get into execution and monitoring stage, you can use iterative maybe two week, three week iterative cycle, and then everything goes in production together. So you can see that there, they, this is an agile layer in between waterfall layers. 
So the, the, I call it water scrum fall or, or a sandwich approach. And this approach is used by many organizations. And I learned about this approach when I was doing training at Pfizer. So long back, I think it's, uh, several years ago, um, I was uh, I was invited to do training at uh, for their IT in Pfizer. And they told me that they follow this and can I incorporate this in my training? So I did it. So that's where I learned that this uh, this kind of an approach is used. And and I lay after that, I saw in multiple places that maybe uh, in Pfizer, they have moved ahead and they use something else now. Uh, I have not uh, talked to them after a long time since a long time. So I don't know. OK, so but this is this is what uh, is the kind of a sandwich approach. And then you have I called is agile. So in this case, these two, la the last two are combined. The first stage initiation planning. So in this case, the implementation or closing was happening in one go, like a big bang kind of a thing. In this case, it, this is also happening iteratively. So closing or deployment is happening iteratively. So you have initiation and planning done upfront, but then you are delivering, delivering and putting the things into production on a uh, on an iterative basis. In this case, you are only developing on iterative basis, but deploying one time. But in this case, all that is happening, you know, in an iterative fashion. So this is a little bit more closer to agile. Okay, this is a little bit more closer to agile. So you can you can you start with something like this. You can go to this. You can start something like this and, and whatever works out. So whatever works out for you, uh, this, uh, you can you can implement it. Uh, are there any other examples that you can think of or the some of you are using uh, hybrid? How which of these methods have have you implemented? I saw a couple of folks saying that they use hybrid. So can they talk about is that or maybe they have the process which is not exactly like that, but similar. So I will I will pause here for a few seconds and see if uh, if some of you want to respond. Anyone? Some of you, you are using hybrid. I know for here, for our hybrid, we use more of the the one in the middle that you have, the water scrum fall. That mm -hmm. aligns with a lot of how our projects are handled. Yeah, and, and that is what I have seen many, many ordination use, use this one, which is very, very common, very common. Uh, thank you, Tashana. Uh, anybody else using any any of these approaches? Okay. All right. So uh, what if none of these methodologies work? None of these hybrid methodologies work. Can you still implement agile in some way or the other in in the in your organization? So answer is yes. And then we go down to the practices. So there are there are about, you know, 20 plus practices I have listed here. Can you pick and choose maybe certain uh, Aspects. These are all agile practices. So if you take some of these and implement in your environment, then also it's a kind of a hybrid environment. OK, so you are not completely. So this is I, I think this by implementing some of these practices, you start moving towards agile. OK, and when you go in the uh, more one of those kind of um, ma hybrid methods that I was talking about, you move more towards agile. And then you can finally transition to uh, you know pure agile if you want to. You don't have to. You really don't have to. If the hybrid works in your environment, that's what you need. Okay, so you don't have to do uh, the the pure agile. All right. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, picture that I took from the Pulse of Prof Profession report, same report from Project Management Institute, and it says the different flavors of hybrid. So the First bullet here is waterfall. You know, we'll take the other word for waterfall is predictive, and then agile on this side. So this is pure waterfall. This is pure agile, and now in between you have three scenarios. So this one is uh, 
you know, utilization of some of the agile practices and techniques, which I was just talking about. You can implement some of the practices. You don't have to implement the whole methodology and you can start moving towards this side on the right side. Uh, this is the one which we talked about detailed planning and requirements early in the timeline and then development phase uses sprints or, or iterative approach. So this is the last one that I was talking about. And if I want to go back, I will say this is the one Vagile. This is what I'm talking. This is what I talked about. So this is what uh, they are saying that, you know, they, they do uh, development phase use or oh, development phase. So this is actually the middle one. Development phase uses deployment is still. So it is the it is the middle one. Uh, and then they have this one, which I have not put in uh, in my slide. I should put this also as one of the possibilities where you are using different iterations to do different part, like you build in one, you test in other one, you fix bugs, and then you validate in the other one. So they are using uh, four different iterations. So basically they are doing a, uh, you know, kind of mini waterfall you know, kind of thing. I'm building everything in this this particular iteration. Then I'm testing what I built in the first one and then I'm fixing bugs. And then maybe in the sprint one or iteration one, I took two requirements and I built those two requirements. And then the next one, I test those. And, and then while sprint two or three, four in progress, I keep building. So maybe every two weeks or four weeks, whatever is your time frame. I build first, then in the next one I test, in the next one I fix issues, and then in the fourth one I uh, I validate. Okay, so this, this completes the thing, and if you want to put that in production, you can put it. If you don't, then you don't need. Okay, so this is another statistics in the report. 38 of the project manager use mainly predictive with some agile component, so I think this circle here and 15% of the project may mainly agile with small predictive components. So maybe uh, maybe some some uh, somewhere in between. All right. And this is a report I will highly, highly recommend you. And if you are a PMI member, this report is free. So uh, you can you can study more on this. So the most common agile practice that can be used uh, can be incorporated. So iterative and incremental aspects and managing requirement using a backlog or stories. So you can actually prioritize your requirement and put it in the in the form of a backlog. The other one is prioritization. You can always prioritize what we need to do next kind of a thing. Uh, visualization using Kanban, visualization of work, create a board and, and start start using uh, using that. I heard in the beginning that one of you started using it, which is great. Uh, product and release planning. You can plan those things and you have frequent uh, followed by frequent planning and reviews. And then you have retrospectives that you can implement and have daily or some kind of a regular touch base or standups. So those are some of the practices that can be used in a hybrid environment. Uh, limiting work in progress. Yeah, that's another one. Focusing on finishing rather than starting. So that's what the work limiting work in progress is about. Focus on finishing whatever you have started, not just keep starting and not finishing. And continuous grooming, development, integration, deployment. So those are the some. I think that 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 is the yeah that is the one ten uh, practices that you can incorporate in your hybrid environment. Uh, what are the different steps to create a hybrid approach? So very first approach is identify your project goals and the context and then visualize. Visualization, I'm a big advocate of visualization. So visualize your process using value stream mapping and then based on the VSM, co-create a fit for purpose hybrid process. Fit for purpose means something that works for you, picking the best practices from waterfall and agile. Uh, and then identify metrics, as I talked earlier. But this is the sequence that you have to follow. These are the steps you go through. First step, second step, third step, fourth step. And then fifth is implement the hybrid process. And the sixth is measure and improve continuously. And all these steps 
are performed with the entire team. So you are not doing it. Only the leads will uh, get together and decide it. Project manager will say, OK, the leads come and we'll sit down. No, it is very valuable to involve the entire team. That's one of the agile mindset too. So as a project manager or a program manager, if you are trying to do this, in, involve the entire team. OK, so that uh, brings uh, to the end. Uh, we will take a quiz and then we will do the Q&A. So let's go to uh, Menti uh, here. OK, so let's see how many players are there. Five, six, seven. Oh, great. Wonderful. So let's get started. So the questions will come and you need to respond to them. Uh, <clears throat> With the first step to create the hybrid approach. Yeah, we just learned that I talked about this a few sites ago. OK, so most of you are right. So let's say uh, there, it will do some scoring. Uh, Lola is uh, leading. Very good. Uh, let's go to the next one here. Yeah, we just talked about this. Oh, all of you are right, but let's see who was the who was the fastest in responding. Uh, OK, uh, let's see if it uh, disrupts anything. OK, Lola is still leading. Uh, let's go to the other one, the third one here. Uh, it is not so. Uh, OK, oh, wow. OK, all of you voted correctly. OK, seems like Lola is still leading. Yeah, Joanna is just next. Let's see if you can disrupt Lola. Anybody? <laughs> when would you use a hybrid approach? We talked at length about this. OK, everybody voted. OK, um, all right, most of you are right. OK. Seems like Lola is not beatable. <laughs> OK, this is the last one. Not a benefit. Okay, most of you are right. Stakeholder engagement is a benefit. So let's say who are the top two. Okay, Lola and John, Johanna, congratulations. So please write to me and which which of these uh, rewards you want. The top two will get one of these. So you can write to me and and let me know what what you would like and we will set you up. Uh, all right. So in conclusion, um, hybrid method allows a team to reap benefits from both waterfall and agile can work well in several settings for projects where agile is too flexible. Waterfall is too rigid, requires team collaboration and thorough communication. Uh, so that brings to the end of it. Um, uh, anybody has any questions? Uh, and uh, you can you can ask those questions. I have one more slide to show you about our trainings. We have some new trainings, generative AI for project managers. This is a new training that we have developed. It's a one day training and it uh, helps you to understand how generative AI can be used by project managers. And I am I am running a group. I am facilitating a group of project managers 
who are developing three proof of concept POCs for generative AI in project management. If you are interested in joining that group, it's a voluntary group. So if you are interested in joining, please write to me, send me an email that you are interested in joining. We meet every Friday from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern. And there are three POCs which are already in progress. You can join one of those POCs or you can have your own new POC. Uh, that will give a good, uh, you know, something that you can, uh, you can use in your projects and uh, you can understand better how you can use generative AI. So that's a volunteer group. It's a free group. But if you want to get immersed in the learning, then this is one day class that we do. Uh, we also have a critical thinking and problem solving class, which is also a one day class. Uh, I believe, I don't know, Sarah, do you know it's a one day or two day? I don't remember now. Uh, one then, day. One day, okay. And then this is dashboard in a day with Power BI. So if some of you are interested in developing analytics, uh, this is another another new class that uh, we have introduced in last year or so. Two o'clock, uh, so we will end the webinar and I will look forward to talk to you in my next webinar. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.